Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California. I'm led to uh, <clears throat> to do a Bible study on Hebrews 12. It's so important that we stay in the Word, amen, and it's so important that we fellowship together. So this one's going to be for the remnant. Sad to say these aren't very popular, but it's the Word of God. It's food for your soul. And it comes at a time when the world is just falling apart. And we're all longing for Jesus. I truly believe he's at the door. I believe he gave me this chapter to encourage us. So it's Friday 5-17 already. May 17. And it reads like this. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Okay, who are the witnesses? Will you go back? One chapter to Hebrews 11, and it mentions of all the prophets and the and everything they had done by faith. It's called the faith chapter. So he's just following up. He mentioned all these people that was by faith Abraham this, by faith Noah that, by faith Sarah this, by faith Enoch that. And then and then he comes and he says, So seeing that you're compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us, and run with patience the race that is set before us. So, this is interesting. This is interesting because it says run. It doesn't say walk with patience and let us walk with patience. Or let us jog with patience. Or let us stand with patience. It says let us run with patience interesting that when I think of running patience is probably the last thing I think of the Bible is an amazing thing and it says it's a race that is set before us it, it will be it watched so sure you can get tired sure you can get weary but in in patience possess your souls how does how does that scripture go Is it is it in your patience? In your patience possess ye your souls. Luke twenty one nineteen. I'm gonna take my time with this, so it might run half hour, a little longer, I'm not sure, but uh, I wanted to have this up for the weekend so people could have something to to listen to. It's been a while. So we're running this race and we're having patience and then we're looking unto Jesus, look, the author and finisher of our faith. So thank you, Holy Spirit. In the, in the Holy Scripture, it says every man has been given a measure of, a measure of faith. For I say, through the grace given unto me, let every man that is among you not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So our faith comes from God. It's actually a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So he authored that faith so that you could believe in him. And he expects you to walk in it. And he's looking for it when he returns. And he's also the finisher of your faith. And I wondered, like, what are they talking about? Well, so he gives you faith and then he finishes your faith. So faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith in what Jesus did on the cross is what we're talking about today, saints. The finished work of the cross. The finished work of the cross is what we have faith in. And he authored the faith who for the joy that was set before him, we're talking about Jesus, endured the cross, despising the shame. And some may think, oh, what are they talking about, despising the shame? Well, you know, back in those days, the Romans crucified a lot of people, and it was considered a shameful way to die. It, 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 
it was a whole, it was just it was a shame if you were crucified they wanted to put a shame on you but he despised the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god in other words in all power and authority as a deity glory to god a little bit of water for consider him that endured such contradictions as sinners against himself lest ye be worried and faint in your minds remember this you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin none of us have ever been had to nail to a cross and die just because of sin and and he had no sin in him so we need to consider that during our trials and during our walk or else you could faint in your minds and now this is really interesting verse 5 I'm telling you, I could just end this thing on verse 5. We'll see how the Holy Spirit goes, but it, it's an amazing thing. It says, and you have forgotten, this, this, this is what the Holy Spirit gave me. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. In other words, the scripture, Jesus Christ, he compared us to children and he exhorted us. So you've forgotten the exhortation. And, and I thought to myself, like, what exhortation have I forgotten? Isn't it interesting? Well, I looked it up and it's Proverbs 3, a beautiful chapter. It says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be, neither be weary of his correction. So there is correction in your walk with Jesus. There is humbling, and there is trials, and there is tribulations. I'd like to say that my trials and tribulations are over with, but they're not. But we press on through faith. It's so important to have faith. So it says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. The word, quoting the word. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth everyone whom he receiveth. Do you hear that? Are you going through a chastening? It's because he loves you. Now, he says, and if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? In other words, what kind of father would he be if he never chastened us? If he never corrected us? If he never rebuked us? If trials and tribulations never came? Because they come to make you stronger. Matter of fact, in verse 8, it says, if you're without any type of rebuking or correction or chastisement, uh, it says, wherefore, we're all partakers. It says, then you're bastards and not sons. In other words, you're none of his. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But we do get chastened, and we do get rebuked, and we do get corrected, and we go through trials, and we go through tribulations, especially as we wait for Jesus to return. So we're to consider Jesus and what he went through, and that he loves us. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reference. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? This is interesting because it's saying God is not only the father of the natural, he's the father of the spiritual. That's what I get out of that. For they verily for a few days chastened us with their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that he might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Verse 11. I kind of want to... I'll just continue. Okay, in 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down in the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. I think I am going to bring up a parallel Greek amplified. 
let's come down to 11. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems sad and painful. It can I get it, amen? Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. In other words, right standing with God and a lifestyle and attitude that seeks conformity to God's will and purpose. This is so important. This is a rhema word it said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this again. For the time being, no discipline brings joy. Have you considered the fact that if you're going through a trial and tribulation that it may not be the devil, you may be getting disciplined by God? Have you considered that? It says, this makes sure that you're in right standing with God in a, life, a lifestyle, an attitude that seeks conformity to God's will and purpose. Now, I've learned something in my 40 plus, 45, 45 year walk uh, with Jesus. You can walk as close to him as you want to walk. You can walk on fire in the Holy Spirit. You can go around and be on fire everywhere, go to church three times a week, witness it everywhere. And and, uh, and you're going to be closer to Jesus than if you, and, and praying in the Spirit. I want to talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, being around others. These are things that can build up build you up being around others have, have, have you noticed that the gifts of the spirit are in operation when others are around i'm just curious twelve what does it say over here so then strengthen hands that are weak and knees that tremble. Cut through and make smooth straight paths for your feet. Look at that. That are safe and go in the right direction. So that the leg which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather may be healed. Come back to the King James 14. It says, follow peace with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What does it say in the Greek Amplified? Continually pursue. Could I just pause and say, are we doing this? Are we doing this? Continually pursue peace with everyone. And the sanctification without which no one will ever see the Lord. See to it that what it means is be it made perfect. We're all going to be made perfect when we're, when we're with Jesus. And we wait for that day. We're not perfect now, but the process of sanctification brings us to that. And it's not complete until we're with him. See to it that no one falls short of God's grace, that no root of resentment springs up and causes trouble, and by it many be defiled. And see to it that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For ye are not come into the mount which might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor into blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice, when they heard, entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. What you talking about, Willis? It's talking about over in the Amplified. It says, "For you have not come, as did the Israelites in the wilderness, to a mountain that can be touched into a blazing fire." It's talking about when Moses uh, went up the mountain. And to gloom and darkness and a raging windstorm, and to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words, such that those heard it begged that nothing more be even said to them. For they could not bear the command. If even a wild animal touches the mountain, it will be stoned to death. In fact, 
So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am filled with fear and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the myriad of angels in festive gatherings, and to the general assembly and assembly of the firstborn who are registered as citizens in heaven, and to God who is judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous, the redeemed in heaven, who have been made perfect. Do you see that? Bringing them to their final glory. People that made it are watching us. And they were made perfect when they were with Christ. You can't be perfect down here. I think the enemy tries to get it in your head that you should be perfect or you're supposed to be perfect or you ought to be perfect, but no. What you need is faith. You need to exercise your faith. 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, uniting God and man, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler, more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. Now, I'm going to read this in the uh, Greek Amplified, the rest of this, because I received a revelation on this. The world is being shaken right now. And in Hebrews 12, 25, it says that everything can be shaken, will be shaken. But it talks about this unshakable. I just want to encourage people today. Just listen. We are in an, un, we have inherited and we are in an unshakable kingdom. Even though everything's going to be shaken, we won't be shaken. So have a listen. It says, so the revelation I received was maybe God's just shaken some things off of us. Getting us ready, drawing us closer. What a thought that, it, what a concept as you draw closer to Jesus, you become more aware. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you become more aware of him and his ways? See to it that you do not refuse to listen to him who is speaking to you now, capital H. For if those sons of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to, now follow me on this, him who warned them on earth, revealing God's will. How much less will we escape if we turn our backs on him who warns from heaven? His voice shook the earth, and it says at Mount Sinai. Then, but now he has given a promise, saying, Yet, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this expression, expression yet once more, indicates the removal, removal and final transformation of of all those things which can be shaken. This is powerful. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. That is of that which has been created. So that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore since we receive a kingdom. Listen to this. Therefore since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Let us show gratitude. And offer to God pleasing service and acceptable worship and reverence and awe. For our God is indeed. A consuming fire. So what manner of person ought, ought we to be? It's amazing, you know, this Bible, you could just choose, just choose a chapter and just read it and it just speaks to you. It's alive and it could say so much. I believe that this is encouragement, that Jesus is coming very, very soon, and this is encouragement for us to continue having patience and reminding us that we're running a race. The race has been set before us. But here's the thing, Jesus already won the race. God bless you. I, I pray this blesses you. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I come boldly to the throne room of grace to obtain your mercy. I pray for the people who will listen to this. I pray that the Bible says faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. I pray that this word 
would sink deep down, amen, hallelujah, deep down into their souls, that backsliders would come back, that people would repent, that those who have been walking faithfully with you would be blessed, and relationships would be restored, Lord, and that you would give us strength as we wait down here, as you tarry, Lord. It's like you'd put everything on pause. It just seemed like we were on our way to heaven and the mark of the beast was being implemented, Lord Jesus, and they were shutting everything down with a lockdown and telling people they, they couldn't buy or sell unless they got this vaccine, Lord. And it, it just seemed like everything was paused. And we know that's for a reason, so... We continue to run this race. We continue to seek your face. We continue to love you, Lord. And we ask that you bless and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen.